In this video, we'll be talking about the IPA 2.0 converter tool. But before we begin, I want to bring you into IPA itself to show you how to download it. Go to the input button in IPA and then click on the download IPA converter. This will download the latest version. To figure out the latest version you're on, go to the converter tool and look here to compare it to the version that you're on. Now, I always get this question and I'm going to address it in this video and that is how do I get information into this converter and how do I do it quickly and easily? So what I've done is I've just taken a, a random tape and I'm going to show you how to organize this tape very easily. Uh, the first thing I like to do is look for the address, the city, the state, the zip. And um, most of the time you're going to see everything in this order, which corresponds to your IPA converter, street, city, state, and zip. So there's really not much you need to do except copy that data. But what I like to do is organize it in such a way where I create, I insert another column. And the way you insert a column is simply by going to the area where you want the column right clicking on the letter that you've selected at the top and then saying insert and once they've inserted I like to color it like any color it doesn't matter just to give it a separator so that I know that these are my addresses right here and I'm not gonna mess with those I like to do the same thing with my note details I know that I have eight columns in my converter one two three four five six seven eight I'm going to come over here and make sure that I have eight columns over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then over here, I'm going to insert a new column and I am going to give it a black color too, so that I know that these are the columns that I need to work with. So now what I need to do is make sure that these are in the same order as what I have here in the converter. So the first thing I need is my UPB followed by the payment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for the UPB, which happens to be the current balance. Now, here's the trick and here's what saves you time. Right now, this is just a, a standard table that somebody would send you, a seller would send you. It's not even a table for that matter, it's just a, a data set. What we wanna do is we wanna convert it into a table so that we can move these columns around and make it easier to manipulate the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything, all of the data, and I'm going to come up to insert and I'm going to click on this table button. And when I click on that table button, I'm going to make sure that my table has headers is clicked as well. I'm going to say OK. And then when you do that, the first thing you'll see is that the filter buttons come on. And when you're on the table, it'll say table design up here. If I'm off the table, you see it goes away. If I'm on the table, it's up there. If I don't want to see these filter buttons, I can always go to Home, Filter, and then click the filter button and then they're gone. So that's how you can quickly get the table organized and um, it's very simple, straightforward. Once that's done, we need to start moving our columns around. So our first column in the note is going to be our balance. So what you need to do is you need to select the top header in your column and mouse over until you see the arrows going in all directions. And then click on it and drag it to where you want it to go. And then it'll move that entire column and switch it with your other one. Now the next column I need here is the payment column. So I'm gonna look for P and I and I happen to see it right here. So I'm gonna drag this over to my column here. Now I have my current balance PNI organized. What the next one I need is the rate and then the term. So I'll come back and I'll look for the rate. The rate is right here. Drag it over. And let's see if there's a term in here. Um, original term right here. So I'm going to drag that over. And then let's see what else it needs. And then we have our original loan balance, which we actually have in there already. And then we're looking for 
dates. So we need the loan origination date, first pay date, next due date. So we'll come back and we'll look for our dates. And it looks like the dates start around here and I don't need any of this other data in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply hide this data. Uh, if, I, if I select it, right click on it and click on hide, it will hide that data. So now I can see my, my dates here. And the first date I'm looking for, again, is my loan origination date. So here's the origination date. I want to drag this over to the correct position, which is right after the uh, original balance. Then I'm going to want the first pay date. I'll come back over, look for the first pay date which is right here. I'm going to drag that over to the next column. And then I need the next due date, which is this column here. And drag that over. And I don't need any of these columns, so I'm going to drag these over, drag this over. So now I have my eight columns in order. I have my street and addresses in order and I can start cutting and pasting. <clears throat> That's how easy it is to, to get organized. Now, the other thing that we've introduced into 2.0 is a value column. So if you do have values, you might wanna put that data in there as well. And I believe this tape had um, some data representing the BPOs. So I'm going to unhide. I'm going to look for that data. Here it is, appraisal and BPO AVM. So what I'll do is I'll just drag this over to this column here. So that way I know I have values right there. And that's it. Our data is now organized and we're ready to cut paste into the converter tool. Let's go over to the converter tool real quick. And the first thing we're going to want to do is cut and paste the street, city, state, and zip into the converter. So we'll come back to our data. We will select that information and we can either right click and copy or we can control V as in Victor, which will also copy everything. That's just a shortcut on the keyboard. Come back over to IPA. And here there are two ways to paste the data in. One is to click the paste address in and it will paste everything in line by line. And then when it's done, it will trim the entire uh, table to the data set. And you can see that it, it trimmed down here. The other way to do it is to select your data and we're selecting the notes right now and control C as in copy, come back to your data and then control V on your keyboard, which will paste everything in a lot quicker. Now we have one last thing to bring in and that is the values. So we'll go back to our data, select the values, and control V as in Victor and paste them in. Now, as I've pasted the data in, you can see that it, um, it may or may not be formatted in a, a very perfect way. And um, sometimes when you paste things in, it's gonna carry over the formatting from your table. And if that's the case, you just have to click this format button up here and it'll format everything for you. Um, it'll center, justify the right columns. It'll put everything in, you know, left justify that needs to be left justifies and, and so forth. Now, the other thing we've imported that data in here. And one of the things that you'll notice is the rates look weird. Why, why are they 537%? If we go back to our table 
that we cut and paste from and we look at the data, this data is actually formatted as a number. If I were to click this percentage sign, you'll see that it goes to 538%, which is what we're seeing in the converter. One of the things that we've done is we've created um, some automation in here. So when you paste your data, it might look like this at first, but then when you generate your note details, it will automatically change or recognize that it needs to be changed and change it for you. So you can see now that they're correct. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do here is click the generate button for the addresses. Once that's done, we're ready to cut and paste into IPA. Now let's get into um, some of the tools that we've implemented into the converter here. Down here at the bottom, we've created uh, a tally calculation uh, row, if you will. And what this is doing is it's basically saying that you have 38 assets in here. And it's looking at each of these rows as an asset. In the UPB column, we're adding all of the UPBs up, and in this case, they add up to about one or 8.1 million. Uh, the the PNI payments, we're taking weighted averages against the UPB to get our average payment, and again, this is a weighted average against the UPB. So, you know, you might have something like uh, a UPB of 430,000 and a higher payment, what it's doing is it's looking at that relationship and giving us a true average based on that weight. Same thing with the rate and same thing with the term. Why is this important? Because if you're buying a tape, it's important to understand where your averages lie and how much the, the UPVs are worth on that tape so that you can make a, an informed decision. We've also added a value column over here. And the reason why we added this value column is to give you a little bit more um, ability to weed out some of the notes that you may not want. <clears throat> and in order to do that, we've created these toggle buttons up here. Now these toggle buttons basically turn on and off. If I were to turn one on like the filter, all the filters come on here. And if I toggle it off, the filters go off. If uh, I want to organize these assets, I can click the organize button and then I can come over here and I can either type in X, Y, N, or M. And I will show you what those look like. Each one is different, has a different color coding to it. But it's just to help you organize a little bit better and understand what it is you're looking at across the board. If you're, if you're done looking at them and highlighting them, you can do one of two things. You can either delete these in this column or you can click the organize button off and it'll unhighlight them, but leave your markers here. So that way you can come back and remark them. Or like I said, you can select them and delete them and then the highlight goes away. We also added this analyze button and this missing data button. If I click the analyze button, it's going to give me a bunch of color-coded cells in here, which you really won't know what they mean unless you look at the legend. So we also have a legend toggle up here. So when I click on legend, it brings up the legend. Now, we'll just kind of go through this line by line. Uh, first, we're looking at the UPB and the color coding is this purple color. What this means is when it's highlighted, the UPB is higher than the original loan balance. So here we have the original loan balance, which is 132,000, and we have the UPB, which is 138,000. The reason why we highlight this is because the UPB can never be more than the original loan balance unless there's something else going on with the loan, meaning maybe there's a loan modification, maybe there's fees or something else is added on top of the UPB. So this could mean that the seller is representing the full balance or the payoff. We don't know. And it's probably something that you should ask the seller because if there's, if they're saying that it's the unpaid principal balance and it's more than the original loan balance, you've got a problem. Also 
On the payments, one of the things we like to do is only look at payments that are above a certain threshold. And in this case, we've set that threshold to $600. So if the payments are more than 600, it will highlight in green. And the reason why we do that is because if the payments are too low, a lot of times, especially when you have non-performing notes, the amount that you spend on rectifying that, that note or cleaning it up, the legal fees and the servicing and, and so forth, eat into your profitability when your payments are too low and your UPB is too low. So we like to um, set that threshold at about 600. That's even low, but um, that's about as low as we want to go. Looking at the term, what we've done here is we've said that anything that's outlined in blue or highlighted in blue has a low likelihood of having a loan modification on it. And the reason is because two things. One, if the loan term falls within a standard 180, 240, 360 structure, typically you won't see a loan modification on it. However, that doesn't mean there won't be one. It's just less likely. Also, if the UPB is greater than the uh, original loan balance, we're not going to uh, highlight it either. So if the term it falls within the 180, 240, 360, and the original loan balance is higher than the UPB, then it will highlight. So that's kind of how we filter through that. What this generally tells us is that the likelihood of loan modification is lower. Moving on to the next due date, this column here will highlight if it's a performing or non-performing note. And it'll highlight in green if it's performing, and it'll highlight in this brownish color here if it's non-performing. We can see all of these are non-performing. If I were to change this date to something more current, you'll see that the color changes. So this is a good indicator as to whether or not you have performing or non-performing notes. And the performing note is defined as anything less than three months delinquent. We've also, in this value column, we have a red highlight here. And this red highlight means that the value is less than the UPB. So if you were to buy this note with a UPB of 142,000 and the seller is asking you for a certain percentage of the UPB, you're basically throwing money out the door because if it goes to foreclosure, you're never going to get your money out of it if the value is less than the UPB. So you got to take that into account and you're going to want to base your bid off of the value rather than the UPB. That's why we highlight this. So the next thing we have here is this missing data button or toggle, if you will. If you click this missing data toggle, what it will do is it'll highlight any assets that have missing data. And then this set, you can see there's no missing data. So let's just uh, delete a couple of cells here. So we'll delete one. You can see that it shows that it has missing data there. Also, if a cell has NA in it, because sometimes you get a, a tape that has NA in it, and NA will also uh, tag that as well. If we have something like just a line, it'll also tag it. So if it's empty, if it has NA, or if it has a little line through it, which, which we get all the time with tapes, it will tag it as missing data. The great thing about this toggle is if, if it gets too busy, for example, if I have my organize button clicked and I've got, you know, all of these, these colors and toggles going on, things are getting a little crazy. What I can do is I can turn off the organize button. I can turn off the missing data button or I could leave it on or I could turn off the analyze button. So that makes it a lot easier too. We also have an instructions form here that pops up so that you can read how to use the converter tool. And then when you're done, you just toggle it off. Same thing with the legend. When you're done with uh, all the color coding, you can toggle it all off. It doesn't go away. It's still there. You can toggle it back on. And when you're dealing with copying and pasting into IPA, you might have your organize buttons on over here. 
and that way when you select one of these addresses you know exactly where you are okay a couple of other things we've added is this format all button when you click it it literally does just that it'll format everything in the table and make it nice and neat for you and it'll also trim the table to the last line of data if you want to expand the table for whatever reason maybe you want to add a couple more assets in there you can expand it to up to 500 rows so you can see it expanded it here and then I can cut and paste more information in here as needed and then I can retrim the table if I want and it trims it back up for you Cutting and pasting is a little bit simpler as well. So in this case, all we need to do is select our address that we want to cut and paste into IPA and then go to copy address and it says go to IPA and paste the data. And once you're in IPA, simply click paste. And if it's a note, click on note, occupied or vacant. Um, in this case, they're non-performing notes, first position. Now I'm going to want my note information. Come back over to the converter tool, select my notes along this same line here. Copy. Go to IPA and paste the data. Simple as that. And that is how easy it is to work with the IPA converter. I hope this was an informative video for you and if you ever have any questions feel free to email us at support at revivalbrothers.com. Have a great day.